Hi everybody, I'm so happy to be back and very fortunate for this opportunity to reconnect with everybody. Um, I've really been missing everyone and uh, this is going to be a great opportunity uh, to move forward with your education. So what we have in store for you this week is sanitation and disinfection and foot disorders. So those of you that have your manuals out, you can uh, read through with me as I read through the chapter and I'll elaborate on the important uh, bits of information that you need for your question answers and your quizzes and tests. Um, at the end of the chapter, you guys can ask me questions um, and I'll answer them. Uh, make sure to gear your questions towards the chapters. Um, if you have any other questions regarding student loans or schedules or anything like that, um, uh, those can be directed to uh, student services um, at newimage.ca, okay? I'm also doing a Zoom tomorrow at 12 o'clock um, that everyone's invited to. So if there's questions I didn't get to answer for you today, then join on to our Zoom link um, that we'll be sending out and uh, we can chat more tomorrow at 12, okay? Perfect. So we've got lots of people on uh, joining us today, so that's awesome. Hope everyone's good. I know everyone's going through a hard time right now, um, but we'll get through it. Okay, so we're going to start with a sanitation and disinfection chapter. <clears throat> then we'll move on to uh, foot disorders. So sanitation, disinfection. Whenever you work with the public, there is a possibility of infection or injury to yourself or your clients. The risk is much greater if your implements and surfaces you are working with are contaminated. A surface that is not completely free from all foreign substances is contaminated. So that's bolded there. Um, you will need to know that for your quiz, so highlight that if you can. A substance that causes contamination is called a contaminant. Highlight. Filing and dust are contaminants. Even a nail polish remover on a towel or on the cotton is a contaminant. Implements may appear to be clean when in fact they are covered with bacteria. Decontamination is the elimination of contaminants including pathogens from implements or other surfaces. So um, highlight decontamination. There's three types of decontamination. So removing bacteria from a surface. So sterilization is the highest, then disinfection is the second highest, and then sanitation is the lowest level. So sterilization is the highest. We don't need to sterilize in the nail salon uh, or spa. Um, only medical doctors, clinics um, dealing with the general public and their health um, need to sterilize. But estheticians and nail techs need to focus on disinfection, the second highest, the second level. Disinfection uh, kills all bacteria, um, viruses, and fungus, except for spores. So if you need to kill the spores, you need to sterilize. Will spores harm you in the salon? No. As long as the bacteria is, is dormant, um, meaning inactive, um, and in, in the spore-forming stage, it cannot hurt you. So we have bacteria spores bouncing around everywhere here. But as soon as the environment for bacteria, you guys have already done the bacteria chapter, so you know this, as soon as the environment is favorable for that bacteria, then they grow. So what's a favorable um, environment for bacteria? Warm, dark, damp, unsanitary. So it takes a very specific type of envir environment for them to grow. So we're good with disinfection. Um, Sanitation is great for surfaces. If you spray and wipe with disinfectant, you're still sanitizing. In order to disinfect, um, a lot of people don't realize this, you have to keep the surface wet with disinfectant for 10 minutes. If it doesn't stay wet for 10 minutes, it's not disinfecting. So you can use disinfectants um, all you want, um, but all it's doing is sanitizing, which is still great and it still stops the spread uh, and the growth of bacteria but it doesn't necessarily kill it. So sterilization destroys all living organisms on an object or surface. Sterilization is only required for surgical procedures. The word sterilize is often used incorrectly and it is used loosely, especially in our industry. So if clients say, how do you sterilize your equipment? How do you sterilize your nippers? 
Um, I really, you know, I'm, I feel uneasy. I got a fungal infection the last time I, I went to a uh, nail salon. Um, don't try to explain the difference between sterilization and disinfection. They're not going to understand. Um, just explain your disinfection uh, protocol, okay? It is impossible to sterilize the nail plate or cuticle, so you can't sterilize the skin or the nails. Um, sterilizing would destroy the nail plate and kill the skin. Disinfection. Disinfection controls microorganisms on non-living surfaces, such as implements. Disinfection is the second level of decontamination above sanitation and almost identical to sterilization. So you need to know that the difference between sterilization and disinfection is that sterilization, yes, kills bacteria, fungi, and viruses, um, but it also kills spores. Okay, so that's the only difference, is that sterilization kills spores, disinfection does not. Bacterial spores do not cause harm in the salon, so disinfection is just as effective in the salon without the expense or the danger um, or hassle of sterilization. Disinfectants are serious professional strength tools that may cause irritation and skin damage with prolonged exposure. So be very careful when you're using your solvents, when you're using alcohol, even when you're using acetone. Um, you don't know that you're going to de develop a contact dermatitis until sometimes months or years after being exposed to the chemical. So if you are more sensitive um, to that kind of thing, just always wear gloves. Um, even when you're cleaning your house, when you're using Clorox bleach disinfectants and Lysol spray disinfectants in your bathroom uh, or your kitchen, wear gloves um, and try not to breathe the chemicals in. Disinfectants are only safe and effective when used exactly as the manufacturer instructs. So we know with certain disinfectants, sometimes you have to dilute them with water, sometimes they're fine on their own, um, and they have an immersion uh, time um, that you have to follow. So our Marvicide that we use is, is the blue liquid. You have to mix that with water and you have to mix it to the exact ratio um, in order for it to be effective. And we know that we have to soak our implements for a minimum of 10 minutes. Hopefully no longer than 15 minutes. Um, it's, it's not a bad thing, but it's just going to dull your edges uh, and maybe erode the metal a little um, over time. But 10 minutes is ideal. High quality disinfectants must perform all three functions. So they have to kill bacteria, viruses, and fungus. Okay, and that makes it a hospital grade disinfectant. If it's a hospital grade disinfectant, that means it's EPA approved. Okay, so if it kills bacteria, um, it's a bactericide. If it kills fungus, it's a fungicide. If it kills viruses, it's a viricide. Okay, so EPA registered disinfectants, meaning hospital grade disinfectants, do all three. Unless you're cleaning up blood spills, no other disinfectant is required. Now, when you clean up blood spills, um, you're re required to use a, a tuberculoidal disinfe a disinfectant. Um, most EPA registered disinfectants now on the market um, are used for blood spills as well. So they're tuberculoidal, okay? Always clean implements before placing them into the disinfectant by washing them with hot soapy water. If you don't wash with hot soapy water first, it's not going to disinfect. All you're doing is contaminating the disinfection jar and uh, weakening it, um, its effectiveness um, to remove um, all of these um, contaminants. So as soon as you put your, throw your nippers in or your um, cuticle cutters or nail cutters and there's a little bit of skin or a little bit of nail stuck to them, you've pretty much wrecked the disinfection solution. I know a lot of people think that it's still going to work and when you're in a hurry and you've got back-to-back -back clients, you don't care about the details of disinfection, but you really need to understand the importance of it. You cannot disinfect unless you scrub with hot soapy water first. Always, 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 always. Okay? So don't cut corners in that department. <clears throat> The glass jar is usually intended for disinfecting implements. Um, 
are often called wet sanitizers. They are actually, called, they are actually disinfection containers. So the purpose is not to sanitize, but to disinfect. That's kind of the old way of saying it. So you will probably hear that verbiage um, in the future. So if you do, just know it's not a sanitizer. Um, the actual glass jar that they use for sanitation sometimes um, is, oh, I'm sorry. Was that good? My hair is always getting in the way. Um, so a wet sanitizer is a disinfection jar. Cloudy disinfectant, disinfectant must be changed immediately. So as soon as it looks cloudy, change it, rinse out the container, and fill it up again with the proper ratio of disinfectant to water, if needed. Microorganisms can live in contaminated disinfectant solutions. Implements must be fully immersed for 10 to 15 minutes, and you must use the correct concentration of disinfectant. So don't think that a dirty or a contaminated um, disin disinfection solution is better than nothing. It's not. Make sure you have at least two sets of implements on busy days. So while one set is disinfecting, you have your other set to work with. So when you're in a high-paced, high-volume salon, and you're back to back to back, sometimes we are in Nixba, um, you need time to disinfect. And that's what happens when people cut corners, is they don't have enough time to clean one set of implements in between clients when you have to go. Um, to the next client and then the next and the next. So I've, when I was working uh, in a salon, I always had two to three sets on me at all times. And it was a lot easier for me to work. I would just rotate from this set to this set. While that set was disinfecting, I wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, so something to think about when you start in the workforce. Sanitation. So sanitation is the lowest level of decontamination. Sanitizing will significantly reduce the number of pathogens on a surface, but it won't kill the pathogens. And we know that we call bacteria pathogens. Usually low levels of pathogens are considered safe, so sanitation can be a very effective form of decontamination. Cleaning with antibacterial soap and water is a form of sanitation, as well as putting antiseptics on the skin or nail plate. Washing your hands with soap and water is a form of sanitation. Um, antiseptics reduce the amount of pathogens in a cut, and the immune system kills those that remain. So basically you have, under your decontamination umbrella, you have sterilization, the highest, kills spores, disinfection, kills viruses, fungi, and bacteria. Sanitation reduces the number of pathogens on a surface. And then beneath that, you have antiseptics. So that's uh, basically a um, form of sanitation that's safe for the skin and the nails, okay? Um, antiseptics are sanitizers that help prevent infection. And when you are washing your hands, you need to sing happy birthday to yourself while washing your hands. So this should take 15 to 20 seconds. Um, I know it's hard to do that. Um, and you probably don't want to sing it out loud, but just kind of rehearse it and time it in your head and just know um, that at least 15 seconds is needed. I've been in the washroom on a few accounts where I see people go in and I see them go out and they didn't even use soap. Or I see them go in, water, bloom, out. No soap and they basically put water on their hands for a second. So when that happens, I do tell on you. Um, but anyway, we just have to be very aware of um, our implements, our sanitation levels, our, um, how we touch our clients, make sure you don't work on open wounds or cause open wounds. Um, because you're working on the human body, you have to be very aware of sanitation and disinfection and bacteria at all times. Guidelines that will help keep the salon clean and sanitary. Floors should be swept, mopped, uh, and carpets vacuumed every day. So if you're at the spa or salon that you're working for doesn't have um, somebody that is responsible for that throughout the day or at the end of the day, 
then the estheticians and nail technicians are responsible for doing that. Um, just deposit all waste materials in a metal waste can with a self-closing lid. Proper ventilation to control dust and filings. Window screens and curtains must be cleaned. Salons need both hot and cold running water. Restrooms must be clean and tidy at all times. Toilet paper, paper towel, liquid soap must be provided and available at all times. Clean the doorknobs, um, especially in the bathroom if you can at the end of the day. Um, clean sinks and drinking fountains often. Separate or uh, disposable drinking cups must be provided. Salons should never uh, be used for cooking lunch or dinner. Never place food in the refrigerator that is used to store salon products or chemicals. Eating, drinking, and smoking in the salon is prohibited by federal regulations. Always use clean linens and fresh towels for each client. Never reuse linens. All containers must be clearly marked, tightly closed, and properly stored. The outside of all containers must be kept clean. Do not place implements in hands, then uh, in your mouth, or in pockets, then in your mouth. Be very careful what you put in your aprons and your pockets. Make sure you wash your aprons regularly, or your uniform, your spa uniform. Professionals should not touch their face or eyes during services. Wash hands before touching your face, eyes, eating, or using the restroom. And no pets or animals should ever be allowed in salons except for trained seeing eye dogs or support dogs. Chemical disinfectants. Quaternary ammonium compounds, also known as quats, are the most commonly used because they are safe and fast acting. Quats are the most effective, so you need to know that they are the most commonly used. They are the most uh, cost effective um, out of all professional disinfectants. Most quats solutions uh, disinfect implements in 10 minutes, so our Marvicide or Barbicide that we use, that blue liquid, that's considered to be a quat. Quaternary ammonium compounds. Leaving implements in for too long may damage them. Quats is very effective for cleaning surfaces as well. Then um, a stronger version of disinfectant is known as a phenyl or a phenolic. Um, they're safe and very effective as well if used properly. Some materials such as rubber and certain plastics are not uh, compatible with these disinfectants. Um, so phenols can soften and destroy these materials over time um, because of their highly alkaline pH. Avoid uncontrolled spraying of phenol type disinfectants. Inhalation of this product can be extremely irritating to the lining of the nose, throat and lungs. Phenolix are highly effective, but extremely expensive. So we use Phenolix when we spray into our petty bowls. So when you're disinfecting your big metal petty bowl at the end of your service, that's a phenol. So when you're doing that, you don't want to do it in a space where there's lots of people, and you definitely don't want to spray and then stay in that area. You want to kind of spray and go. Alcohol and bleach. There are many disadvantages to using bleach and alcohol. Bleach can discolor some materials and has almost no cleaning power. So bleach isn't approved from the FDA, um, so it's not readily used in spas or salons. Um, there is a ratio that you can use from water to bleach um, that acts as a high level disinfectant, but you have to get your ratios right. Alcohol is extremely flammable, it evaporates quickly, and is less effective than professionally designed disinfectant systems. If you don't have anything, then alcohol would be your last choice. Um, they cannot be diluted below 70% or concentrated much above 80. So normally in our industry, we're always gonna see 99% alcohol or 70% alcohol. Um, makeup artists tend to use 99% because it evaporates very quickly, so their brushes um, don't stay wet for that long. They can use their brushes on, on the next person, on the next client. Um, in the spa, when we're using alcohol to sanitize, we need a 30% ratio of water and a 70% of the alcohol concentrate. Um, that 30% alcohol or that 30% water um, is going to keep the alcohol wetter. Um, on the surface for longer, which means it's actually going to have more of a sanitizing, I don't want to say disinfecting action, but um, 
it'll work better for that purpose. So 70% alcohol is perfect for the spa. Alcohol needs, or yeah, alcohol needs hydration to work, um, but don't over dilute if you're diluting um, your own. Um, and alcohol, if you're using alcohol to um, clean implements, it'll dull uh, and corrode uh, metals and sharp edges. So you definitely don't really want to use the alcohol for your implements at all. Implements and surfaces. Table and countertops, mirrors, telephones, door handles, and implements all require disinfecting. Some files, buffers, and porous drill bits can be disinfected. Orangewood sticks cannot be disinfected in uh, the disinfection jar because it will absorb the water and become distorted. So uh, with your wood uh, foot files or your callus uh, removers, um, don't throw the wood foot file paddle into your petty bowl full of water and leave it. It'll become waterlogged and then um, bacteria will get in and the wood will turn black and it's just going to turn into a big mess. And sometimes the, um, the abrasive um, sides of the paddle are adhered with adhesive. So that will probably come loose and your abrasive um, sides will just fall off. So try to keep those away from water. Brushes used to apply acrylics and gels do not require disinfection. When cleaning surfaces with a disinfectant, wear gloves, and if using a disinfectant spray, always try to wear a mask. Ultraviolet ray sanitizers. So ultraviolet sanitizers are useful storage containers, but the types sold to salons will not disinfect implements. I see this a lot in nail salons, and I ask them too, I'm like, what does that UV light box over there do? And they're like, oh, it disinfects the implements. I'm like, oh, really? No, it doesn't. Um, but these people don't know any better. Um, as we know, regulations in uh, Canada, well, for, in BC, uh, for nail techs and estheticians, um, is very low right now. So a lot of people without the proper education are working in these salons, and um, the sanitation and disinfection protocol is not being followed. So as a consumer, just be aware of that um, and ask questions if you feel uneasy or if you want to know how they disinfect, ask them. Put them on the spot and make sure they know what they're doing. Um, so when you see these ultraviolet sanitizers, those metal boxes with the UV light inside, it's a great storage area. So it's, a, it's an environment free from, from bacteria. Once you've washed and scrubbed them clean and then put them in disinfectant for 10 minutes and then taken them out, dried them, you can put them and store them in that storage container. But that um, UV light sanitizer does not sanitize. It just um, prevents the growth of bacteria, okay? Bead sterilizers. These devices do not sterilize or disinfect implements. Sterilizing implements with dry heat would require heating to 325 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 30 minutes. Too much time is needed for this in a busy salon, so definitely not a popular choice. But you'll see them in the beauty salon, uh, beauty uh, wholesalers. Formalin. Formalin was used to disinfect as a fumigant in dry cabinet sanitizers. Formalin contains large amounts of formaldehyde, a suspected cancer-causing agent. It is poisonous to inhale or touch and is very irritating to the eyes, throat, nose, and lungs. It also causes skin irritations because it is a strong allergic sensitizer. So you need to know that formalin is a strong allergic sensitizer, which means it's cancer-causing. Prolonged or repeated exposure can cause allergic reactions similar to chronic bronchitis or asthma. So formalin um, dry cabinet fumigants were really popular um, I, maybe 20 years ago or longer. Um, it's definitely not uh, the first choice in salons today. Pre-service sanitation. <clears throat> Wash implements with hot soapy water. Get in the grooves with the brush. Rinse implements in plain water, remove any soapy residue, then dry. Completely immerse implements in disinfectant solution 
for at least 10 minutes and try to avoid skin contact. Wash hands thoroughly with liquid soap after. Then rinse the implements and dry with a clean towel. Follow approved storage procedure. Wipe table with sanitizer or leave disinfectant on table. Leave on for 10 minutes, then wipe off. Um, when you're spraying the table down, don't spray it directly on the surface. Um, when you do that, it hits the surface and then comes back into your breathing zone. Um, and you don't want to have, you don't want to breathe that in and you don't want your classmates breathing that in. So spray it in the paper towel or the towel and then clean your surface. And then you won't have anything um, in your breathing zone. Wrap client's arm cushion in a clean towel or paper towel, refill disposable materials, and use sanitizing hand wash or hand sanitizer on you and your client before you begin your service if needed. We know that if our client has a cut, even the tiniest little paper cut, or their cat scratched them, or they have a, a little hangnail that ripped on you or yourself, you have to wear gloves. So if your client has any, has any open lesions or wounds, you have to wear gloves the whole time. If you have any open wounds or paper cuts or lesions or injuries, you always have to wear gloves. If you only have a cut on one hand and you just want to wear one glove, that's fine. But you cannot work skin to skin with abrasions or lesions ever. Blood. There are several pathogens that are found in blood, like hepatitis. It is mandatory to report blood, uh, blood exposure incidents by the employee to the employer or management team. If, a, uh, if blood spill uh, occur, many provinces and states require the use of a tuberculoidal disinfectant. So tuberculoidal, tuberculoidal, um, to clean up visible blood. So it's, it says blood spills, but we're not gonna be having a blood bath happening on our nail table. Sometimes, yes, you overnip the client and they bleed a little bit. Um, or you file a little too um, aggressively on the corner and you break the skin a little bit. Um, and that happens and that's normal. But as long as you address it, you use your antiseptic, you put it on the skin, right away you put your gloves on uh, and you tell the client you're sorry, nine times out of ten the client's going to be fine and you can move on. But don't just pretend it didn't happen. Um, not say anything, and then continue the service uh, in an unsanitary way. Um, most cuts often occur from new files and block buffers. So when you have new files and block buffers with every single client, which we do, um, you need to, if you can, just bevel the edges. So with the file that you have and the buffer that you have, I'll use the file on the buffer edges and then I'll use the buffer on the file edges and that just softens the edges. Some people um, have really tough um, skin and other people have really soft skin. So sometimes you don't know until you've already cut the client, but um, I try to do that with every single client, the, the beveling. Disinfectant safety. Never reuse safety gloves as the protective barrier is compromised after the first use. Never pour disinfectants, alcohol, or bleach over your hands. This can cause skin disease and increase the chance of infection because your skin is the barrier between you and the microorganisms. So the best thing you can do to keep yourself safe is washing with hot soapy water. That's it. Don't think that using alcohol on your skin or disinfectant on your skin is going to clean your skin better. It's actually gonna compromise your um, natural barrier and it's gonna make you more susceptible to bacterial invasions. So, universal sanitation. When all of the following are performed, it is called universal sanitation. Use gloves and safety glasses when needed. Use disinfectants and detergents. Use personal hygiene, salon cleanliness, and the use of sanitizers and antiseptics. So basically sanitizers, antiseptics, detergents, disinfectants, eye goggles, masks, and gloves. Okay? 
when you're using all of those when you need to, that's universal sanitation. You have a responsibility to protect your client and yourself from harm. Your, client, your clients depend on your training and expertise, so don't take shortcuts when it comes to sanitation and disinfection. Why surfactants and enzymatics? Pedicure products contain oils and lotions, which are particularly difficult to break down in a foot spa. The resulting residue in the foot bath cannot be completely removed with regular detergents or um, antimicrobial soaps. Surfactant and enzymatic cleansers are the best uh, type of detergent to use to break down this residue. So you can get heavy duty um, cleansers and soaps to clean that residue out because we're doing stone massages, we're using aromatherapy oils, we're using um, sugar scrubs on the leg and foot and that all leaves uh, a thick residue in the foot bath. So that has to be completely removed before we can disinfect properly, okay? Okay, so you guys in your folders that Anna created for you, everyone has their own individual folder with worksheets, questions, um, handouts that you need to complete. Um, I believe you have the sanitation and disinfection handout, so the bigger worksheet, and you have the questions. So you are required to complete those um, and either email them to me or Anna or keep them in your folder and then I um, can access them online if I need to. Um, you guys will be having this week, um, you are going to be doing this quiz. So I'm going to do a quick little review with you on exactly what you need to know because this chapter um, has a lot of information in it, but you don't need to know everything for the quiz. So let's review that now. When I'm, actually you know what, let's um, open up for questions now. If anyone has questions about the chapter, and then um, we can review for the quiz, okay? Hi. What's your question? Bacterial spores cause harm in a sanitary a salon. True or false? Bacterial, bacterial spores do not cause harm in a sanitary salon. That's kind of a trick question. False. Because spores can't harm us in the salon, sterilization is not necessary. Any other questions? Ladies, I'm going to be on Zoom tomorrow um, at 12 o'clock, so if there's any questions that I can't address or questions you can think about asking uh, right now, don't worry about it. Um, just join in on the Zoom link that Anna's going to send to you, um, and then tomorrow at 12 we can discuss everything. If Good question. So if a salon is not sanitary, meaning they don't sanitize their surfaces, then bacterial spores can harm us. So right now, it's bright, it's light, it's dry, um, and sanitary. So there's lots of bacterial spores bouncing all over. Um, I may not spray and wipe this surface, Today, I might spray um, and sanitize maybe in a couple of days. That doesn't mean it's unsanitary. It doesn't mean that that's going to allow the bacteria to grow and reproduce. 
Um, like a really unsanitary environment is wet, dark, and damp. So depending on the level of unsanit, um, or depending on how unsanitary your spa or salon is, is, depends on how quickly that bacteria can reproduce. But as soon as it's in that favorable condition uh, or that favorable environment, uh, which is favorable to the bacteria, dark, damp, unsanitary, then the spore forming, the spore comes off and then the bacteria can reproduce millions of times a day. 32 million times a day, actually. Um, but the question that will be on your TET or your quiz will be, um, can bacterial spores harm you in a sanitary salon? So you say, no, they can't. Why, why do states have strict rules for sanitation and disinfection procedures? To prevent the spread of bacteria from esthetician to client, between client to clients, and between, uh, between coworkers. So basically just to prevent the spread of disease um, in the salon. Those are good questions. <clears throat> That's a great question too. Okay guys, one more minute and we will review for the quiz. And then we're gonna talk about foot disorders. Bacterial spores can cause harm in salons if surfaces are not sanitized. Um, Bacterial spores generally, just know generally speaking, that they do not cause harm in salons. You're not ever going to be in an extremely unsanitary spa or salon. You may, but that's probably not gonna happen. So generally speaking, just know that bacterial spores will not harm you in a salon. Okay guys, let's go through your sanitation and disinfection uh, review for your quiz. Um, you do need to know that um, another name for disease causing microorganisms is pathogens or germs. Um, you need to know that it is impossible to sterilize the nail plate or the skin, so you would never sterilize the skin. Um, hand washing, we know, is a form of sanitation, true. Bacterial spores can cause harm in salons, false. Um, a hospital grade disinfectant is also known as an EPA registered disinfectant and we know that it has to, in order to be called that, kill bacteria, viruses and fungi. Uh, UV ray sanitizers we know are great storage containers because they provide a bacteria free environment.
We know that alcohol loses effectiveness if diluted below 70%. Phenolics have a high alkaline pH. Bleach can discolor materials over time and has almost no cleaning power. Quats are the most effective and cost uh, efficient disinfectant. Uh, another name for wet sanitizer is disinfection container. And disinfection containers are usually made from glass, metal, or plastic. Should you replace a disinfectant if it's cloudy? Yes. Formalin contains large amounts of formaldehyde, and we know that formaldehyde is an allergic sensitizer. A pathogen that can be found in blood Tuberculo uh, tu tuberculosis, um, something that's used to clean up a visible blood spill, uh, a tuberculoidal disinfectant. When using gloves, safety glasses, sanitizers, antiseptics, and personal hygiene, we know that that's called universal sanitation. Needs hydration to work, alcohol. Most cost-effective disinfectant, quats. Most expensive disinfectant, fennels. <laughs> My hair keeps getting in the way. Um, and why should you never pour alcohol or bleach over your hands? Because it compromises your natural barrier, which protects against bacteria. Disinfection is almost identical to sterilization, but does not kill spores. And four important factors of universal sanitation is using gloves, using masks, using eye goggles, using detergents, disinfectants, and sanitizers, and antiseptics. Okay, so that's it really. Any more questions? What is a bead sterilizer? The bead sterilizer is um, the formaldehyde. So that's the type of sterilization that uses formaldehyde. So um, it's like a dry fumigant uh, cabinet. Oh, awesome. Done with your quiz, so yeah. Um, you can send it to me uh, or Anna, amber at newimage.ca or Anna at newimage.ca, or if you can, try to keep all of your um, question answers and quizzes in your folders that Anna created for you on the drive. Um, Marie is wondering what the bed sanitizers. The bead sanitizers, yeah. I answered that. Yeah, pay attention. Awesome, and again you guys, um, when we're done reviewing all of our foot disorders information, um, I'll open up uh, the questions again. Um, so if you've missed anything now, we can always go back to it, no problem. Okay, let's go into foot disorder review. So you guys don't have we don't have a foot disorders chapter. Um, we just have information um, about it. So I'm pretty sure you have that. Awesome, sounds good, Cindy. Sent it, oh wow, you guys are so efficient. Awesome. <laughs> uh, 
Michelle. Thanks, Amir. Do we also send it via email? Yes, when you answer your questions, um, please send via email or just leave a copy in your folder uh, on the drive. The foot disorder test. Awesome. Great. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to foot disorders. Now, some of you have already completed the quiz online. That's awesome. Um, but we're going to still go through all the information for those of you that haven't. So, I'm going to be assigning you a foot disorders project. I believe this project is in your folder. If it's not, I'll make sure Anna gets that in there for you. Um, the Foot Disorders Research Project is going to be done on 10 different foot disorders. Okay, so you can do this on a paper board, like a big paper board where you stick, copy and paste your information with pictures, with little blurbs of information, or you can do it essay style. It's probably easier to do essay style or even PowerPoint. Um, PowerPoint's really easy to use. You can um, input pictures and little blurbs of information. Um, I prefer PowerPoint, and then you can just email it um, or put it in your folder. So you have to research Morton's neuroma, bromhidrosis, plantar warts, hyperkeratosis, athlete's foot, corns, bunions, callus, fissures, and plantar fasciitis. Now some of you, yeah, some of you might have already done this. Um, if you've already done it, awesome, great. Um, those of you that haven't done it yet, um, we'll need to start working on that. Um, now when you're going online and you're finding all this information, it's overwhelming with how much information is out there. Um, just copy and paste little blurbs of information. Don't um, copy and paste the whole paragraph. Or if you're rewording it, just reword it in a simpler um, state. Um, I just need little blurbs of information. I don't need a novel. And always make sure you include pictures. Okay. So the foot disorders test is pretty straightforward. Um, you're going to have all the definitions and then you're going to have a word bank and you basically just fill in the blank for most of them. You handed it in, awesome, perfect. Yeah, if you handed your foot disorders project to Myra, awesome, that's great. Perfect, yeah, some of you are doing your final. Already, exciting. Great, okay, so. Basically, you need to know, and if you don't already have the foot disorders test review um, completed, um, or if it's not in your file, I'm pretty sure it is, but I'll double check, um, then yeah, just wait until the end of the day and I'll have those sent to you. Um, I'll put them in your file. So let's just wait until then um, so you guys have this information and then I'll send the answers um, tomorrow and uh, if you have any questions, again, just log on to Zoom at 12 and then we can sort everything out then, okay? But by the sounds of it, uh, most of you have, uh, have that done. Okay. Do you guys have, does everyone have the foot disorder test review? Did you guys, have you guys completed that or um, have you seen it in your folders? Mm. 
Yeah, I don't think everybody has it. So I'll go ahead and send it anyway, um, just to make sure I don't uh, forget anybody. But that's it, guys. That's our lesson for today. Um, I know a lot of you are graduating and uh, you're almost finished, so that's exciting. Um, yeah, you got it. Everyone's got it. Perfect. Tomorrow. Yeah, hand those in. Um, make sure that all your question answers get handed in, definitely, so they can get marked. Any other questions for me? Not yet? You guys seem pretty organized. Lots of you have already completed most of the work, so that's great. Yeah, Cindy, go ahead. Can five? You're going to have to elaborate on that one. Can five? Hmm, not sure how to answer that. Oh, sorry, can I still order? Oh, the ear piercing kit. Yes, you can. Not at this time. Um, obviously, um, because we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, but as soon as that is over, probably, I don't know when actually, well, whenever it is, then we'll be up and running again and we can start all of our student orders again for sure. But yeah, right, we can't do that at this time. Unfortunately, I did put your order in, um, but everything um, got put on hold um, because a lot of businesses aren't um, uh, running right now. <laughs> no worries, Cindy. Glad you got a new tablet, though. Awesome. Okay, guys. One more minute, and then um, I'll log off, let you guys finish up um, what you need to uh, finish and hand in. Next week, yeah, next week is going to be class on Wednesday again. Um, let me double check. It's, I'm pretty sure it's all going to be at the same time, but things might change. If things do change, Anna will notify you um, via email, so you don't have to worry about that. But I'm pretty sure we're going to run um, the same next week too. And yeah, make sure you guys log into Zoom tomorrow, 12 o'clock. Anna's going to send you the link. Um, yeah, I know that. I don't really know um, exactly what she's sending or if she's sending kits or product. Um, that's something that uh, she'll have to answer for you. I'm not exactly 100% uh, sure on that. Um, but I'll definitely find out for you and Anna will be in touch with you for sure. Okay guys, anything else? Well, enjoy the rest of your day. It was great spending time with you. Really glad um, that we're connected again. And uh, if I don't talk to you tomorrow on Zoom, then I will see you next week. Bye.